Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video and today guys we're going to be taking a look at one of your recommendations in the form of the company Hadrick and Struggles which was brought up by the only Tony Myers the one and the only Tony Myers so he brought this up a while ago finally getting to it and I might also consider doing Autodesk as well, which was brought up by Louis Araya a couple days ago as well. Again, you guys will know if I decide on doing this based off of the length of the video. So also the timestamps, I will have the, the timestamps based off of like when one starts and when one ends. So just you'll see what I decide to do based off of how long this video is. But for now, we're going to be taking a look at this company, guys. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Looking into what this company does, because I have no idea. It's the first time I ever hear about this. For starters, this is actually interesting because they are in the industrial sector. In fact, their industry is human resources and employment services. Very, very interesting. Hydric and Struggles International Inc., together with its subsidiaries, provides executive search, consulting and on-demand talent service to businesses and business leaders worldwide. It enables its clients to build leadership teams by facilitating the recruitment of management and development of senior executives. The company also offers on-demand services to provide clients with independent talent, including professionals with industry and functional expertise for interim leadership roles and critical project based on initiatives. Okay, so basically they help other businesses with like management, right? With management, uh, like pro like I wouldn't even say projects, but, but just like, yeah, just basically like how to like team build, I guess you could say in a way. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that's what they do. So yeah, that's a little bit of what they do. Now let's actually come over to their earnings because they did have earnings on the 27th of February. In fact, EPS normal actual came in at 78 cents beat by 15 cents. EPS gap actual 78 cents beat by 15 cents. Revenue of $235.72 million, which is a beat by $13.68 million. And actually their next one's coming up in April 25th. Very interesting. At least that's what the estimated is over here on Seeking Alpha. But nonetheless, it's still very interesting. They did beat all around. So now let's come into the calculator, guys. We got the ticker symbol for HSII. Market cap. That's a really tiny market cap. $604.77 million. PE of 7.9 with a current share price of $30.45. So just looking at the PE, this is looking really, really like a pretty good price to buy that. Not even going to lie. So looking at that, guys. We see that on the one year, they're down 24.42%. Year to date, they're up 12.65%. 52 week range is $22.79 to $42.17. So not 52 week lows, but not 52 week highs. Kind of leaning more towards the 52 week low end, however. They do pay out a dividend of 60 cents, which ends up being a yield of 2%, a payout ratio of 15.5%, five-year CAGR is tiny of 2.9%, zero consecutive years of dividend growth. So, you know, with that said, we got to see this dividend history because that's a little bit concerning. And by the looks of it, it's not that they cut it. It's just that they just didn't increase it from 2019. That's literally it. So it's they've been pretty consistent about it. So not too bad, right? It's just no growth. That's why you don't see the growth there, right? But overall, it's not as unreliable as a, as another company that, you know, probably would have cut it for other reasons. You know, you would have had gaps here and there. At least they're very consistent with the 15 cents. Ex-dividend date passed. I am so sorry for that. Passed as of the 9th of March. Payout date. It's actually coming up in four days. So if you bought this company before the 9th, you will be getting paid out on the 24th of March and they pay their dividends quarterly. Now, based off of the current shares outstanding guys and the 60 cents, they pay out almost $12 million in dividends every single year. And based off of their five-year average free cash flow, they're still left with $100 million. As of their last year's free cash flow, it is 96.26. That's concerning because usually when the five-year average is higher than the last year's free cash flow, this means that it's consistently decreasing, which is not something you want to see. But these payout ratios, though, are still very, very small at 11.04% for the last year's free cash flow and 10.63 for the five-year average. So, you know, they can 100% afford the 60 cent dividend. So now let's come into the fundamentals, starting with the net income. We got five years ago, 49.3 million to 79.5 million. That is an increase of 61%. Now, we do see something here very, very interesting, and that is that three years ago, they went negative to negative 37.7. But honestly, I'm perfectly fine with this. And here's the reason why. Three years ago was COVID. 
obviously them dealing with management companies or at least like how to help manage companies and that kind of stuff yeah people were working from home you know you don't need to go into the office right so that's essentially why this occurred perfectly understandable now i'm still giving this to 75 percent and here's the reason why mainly because well you know outlier i'm gonna essentially ignore it but from five to four years ago they did go down by around four million dollars or so going from 49.3 to 46.9 so that's essentially why I'm just like, yeah, it, I would give it a much higher grade, but I don't know what caused a slight difference. And actually, I think 75 might be a little bit too harsh. So I'm actually going to go with 85% on this one. So I'm going to change my mind right there. 85% for the net income. Now, at the free cash flow, this one, unfortunately, I cannot give this a decent grade at all because we went from 96.9 million to 108.2 million, increase of 12%, with an average of $112.32 million. Now, we do see a drop right here three years ago and then a spike from three to two years ago, probably because people were going back into the office. It's great, awesome. However, take a look at this. We see a more of a decrease now from five to four years ago. And sure, the three year ago was perfectly understandable as to why they did. But take a look at this massive drop from two to one year ago, going from 265.2 two years ago to $108.2 million one year ago. That's concerning. That's a massive drop. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that this one year ago value is still higher than the five year ago. So it's still increasing, but you could see as to why this is skewed, right? This is like when it comes to like the free cash flow, you know, this outlier here is bringing everything up. And then this one right here is bringing everything down. So it's kind of averaging out everything to like, like flat, I guess you could say. But I'm giving this guy like a 50% because I don't know where this is going to go. Like, I really don't. I'm looking at this and this just confuses me. I don't know if they're going to go down from here or if they're going to go up. So 50% halfway down. I just don't trust it to see where it's going. Looking now at the revenue. This is actually looking fairly decent, going from 716 million to one year ago of 1.1 billion dollars increase of almost 50 percent now we do see a decrease here three years ago again covid i'm gonna ignore this however we do see another decrease once again from five to four years ago so definitely something happened four years ago that caused this definitely something to do more research if you're interested in this company but you can see this decrease was only about like 10 million dollars so i'm gonna give this guys overall of 85 percent similar to that of the net income you know it's it's better i guess i mean you, you really can't have negative revenue because then at that point you're really into some bad stuff but that's essentially why I'm giving it the same, 85%. Looking at the total assets minus total liabilities, this one's actually looking really good. Consecutively and consistently going up throughout the past five years. And take a look at this. Sure, we did go down three years ago, COVID, but two years ago was actually higher than that of four years ago. So that's really, really good to see. Average total assets, it is 1.2. Zero two billion dollars average liabilities is 671 million dollars and doing this difference we get 346.78 million dollars i'm giving this a 100 i'm pretty much ignoring this three-year goal value because it was covid related now what isn't good though is this cash flow minus liabilities because this is consistently decreasing now from three to two years ago kind of kept the flat but they did go down by like a million dollars so i'm going to give this like a five percent overall it's consistently decreasing. I'm only giving a five because they kind of kept this three to two years ago, kind of flat, but not really. So that's essentially why I'm giving this, you know, 5%. But you can see even one year ago, the value was negative $656.8 million, which is significantly lower than that of the average of negative $492.6 million. Looking now at the shares outstanding, this one came in as a shock because this is consistently increasing, going from 19 million shares to today of 19.9 million shares. So the increase isn't that big. However, on the five years, still almost four and three quarters of a percent. But it has been very consistent, like very consistent. You can see right here. Well, to be fair, they've, yeah, they've increased it by like 0.2 almost every single year. From five to four years ago, an increase of 0.2. From four to three years ago, increase of 0.2. Three to two years ago, increase of 0.2. And then from two to one year ago, increase of 0.3. So yeah, from the previous year to the current year, that is a little bit higher than one and a half percent. So I'm going to give this a 60%. It's not too much of an increase, but it's pretty consistent. So I'm going to give it a 60%. And lastly, looking at the cash and clinics, they currently hold $355.4 million with an average of $354 million. 
When it comes to the overall grades, we give them the income at 85%, free cash flow 50%, revenue 85%, assets minus liabilities 100%, cash flow minus liabilities 5%, shares of standing of 60%, overall grade of 66 yeah it kind of feels that way like i'm looking at the fundamentals and it's just like yeah this company it's it's getting there it really is getting there they really just need to fix these uh the, the it's just mainly the cash flow honestly this is that like they need to get the at least consistency they, they need to give me some kind of indications to where they're going with it but 66 percent that's my final grade and now let's actually make some assumptions low median high using of course revenue projected share buyback and a requirement of return of 10%. Now, just putting in nothing, just keeping the values the same, guys, or at least not putting in a revenue growth assumption or a projected share buyback, we can see that the target share price is not just for debt, it is $28.60. Fairly close to the current share price today. However, adjusting for debt, they really don't have that, that much debt in comparison to the cash and equivalents, $75. So based off of that, this is looking like an all-out buy over here. Now, inputting any positive revenue or any, well, let's face it, they're not going to buy back shares. But if they continue to issue shares at around 5% in the next five years, let's see what we actually get. So coming over here to Seeking Alpha, we can see that the forward is this is came as a shock because I see these numbers whenever I pull them up and show you guys. I don't see these numbers in advance unless I put them in beforehand. But you can see here the forward is 0.77. Now, that's fairly low in my personal opinion, but I'm actually going to go with it. I'm actually going to go a lot lower than this for the low assumption. I'm going to go at 0.5% for the revenue. For the median assumption, let's go with 1%. And for the highest assumption, let's go with 1.5%, right? Increase of 0.5 every single time. And lastly, for the projected share buyback, let's say that for the median, they're going to keep doing the same. So let's say negative five. The negative just means that they're going to continue to issue shares at 5% in the next four years. That's not 5% every year. That's 5% cumulative in the next five years. That's essentially what that means. Now for the lowest assumption, let's increase this to negative six. Remember, this is issuing. So if they're issuing more shares, the number here will get further into the negative, right? Because they're issuing more shares. And lastly, for the highest assumption, let's just say negative four. So with that, guys, we get the target share prices of $27.44 to $29 on the dot, not adjusting for debt. And then adjusting for debt, $71.70 to $75.16. With a margin of safety of 5, 10, 15%, this is between, well, let's just say $61 to $71.40. So as it currently stands, this is actually looking like a pretty decent target share prices. Like it, it really does. Because think about it. The PE is 7.9. It's not that big of a company, 604. You know, the current share price is 30. It, we're not really that far off from these target share prices, not adjusting for debt. And seeing that the PE is that tiny, you could make the you could make the case for you know seventy five dollars. I mean, you could even say at like a revenue growth of like five percent for the highest assumption, four percent for the median, and even three percent for the lowest, and you could still make the case for you know eighty two dollars and seventy two cents. Now, obviously, that just depends as to what you guys believe. I personally like to be a little bit more conservative, but even me being conservative about this, it's still looking like a pretty decent buy. Now. Does this mean that you go out and buy it? No, please do not, right? This is not financial advice. None, none of these videos are. The videos that I make aren't. The video that Mike make doesn't. You know, this is mainly for you guys to understand the process, right? This is why I give all of these calculators out for free because I do not want you guys to just listen to a random guy on the internet and then just be like, oh, he's liking it. Therefore, I'm going to buy it. Like the hype that we went through in 2020 and 2021 when all of these people said, buy Tesla, buy Peloton, tattoo chef, etc., 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 to the moon. And then a lot of people holding the bag right now. So, I'm not going to ever tell you what to buy. That's not my job here. My job is to show you guys a process. If you like the process, have these calculators for free. Make your own assumptions, make your own decisions, financial decisions, because at the end of the day, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And also, I don't know your financial situation. There's 2,253 of you. I have no idea what your guys' financial situation is. So only you guys know that, only you guys know what's best to invest in for you. Well, price is best to invest in for you. So again, this is why we give all of this out for free because I personally here on the channel, we believe since I am, I'm going to say it, I am the CEO of this business slash this channel. Well, I believe that you guys should be able to make your own 
financial decisions because at the end of the day again this is not financial advice so all of this is for free this one the revaluation one the book value one and even a dividend tracking sheet all link is in the description below all we're asking for in return guys is just like subscribe comment really does help you with the algorithm on youtube thank you so much for the support 2253 subscribers oh my god you guys are just insane by the way thank you for everybody who joined on the live stream during cpi day we usually do that once a month when cpi comes out we live stream for uh like an hour or so uh mike and i so yeah if you guys can stop by we'll have another live stream next month or if something major happens right but yeah that's uh that's pretty much what we're asking for guys just help us grow the channel like subscribe comment i would love to get this business you know up and running you know being able to subsidize i guess my living expenses and just just grow the company as a whole i mean i just recently also uh change the name of the channel to fatal investing so we're no longer fatal money we're now fatal investing pretty much just a name change that's about it so you know i would love to take this business to the next level uh get a studio do you know face camera live streams you know like like pull up stories go through like the the th this day's economic news that would be so cool to do one day so the more that you guys help us just by liking subscribing and word of mouth telling everybody about our channel especially during these dire times well every person that subscribes every person that comments every person that likes gets us to one step closer to that goal so thank you everybody we really do appreciate it so now let's come to this dividend because 60 cents not a lot but putting in five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars this nets us 188.02 shares which is an annual dividend of 112 dollars and 81 cents not a lot my personal opinion yeah there could be better ones and with a squid of 66 uh, yeah, I would, you know, I mean, it does have potential in this, right? This has potential, especially in the after debt. But if you're solely doing this for its dividend, this is not a dividend play. And when it comes to options, this doesn't look too good either. First of all, there really is no expiration here. Uh, we got April 21st, so that's a month out from now. May 19th, July, and October, that's it. When it comes to the put side for April 21st, we have a few volume here on the 12. We got one volume here at 25 strike and a few bids for 25 strike and on the 30 strike. And in regards to the covered calls, we got... Well, actually, we only got one bid here, and that is only the $35 strike. So that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, this company just doesn't really have that much volume to trade in regards to an options kind of strategy. All in all, thank you so much, Tony, for this recommendation. And I personally think this company has potential, especially when it comes to the target share prices after debt. But I think... Me personally, I would need to do more research. If I was interested in this company, I would personally do more research, especially as to why all of their profit metrics went down four years ago. If that makes sense, you might want to pull the trigger on this one. If not, I would say move on. So now, guys, let's actually cover the second company that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Because, well, you guys are taking a look at the length. So, yeah, I'm going to cover the company Autodesk, which was brought up by Luis Araya. So thank you so much for the recommendation. And um, I'm actually really interested in this one because, well, I have a personal... Uh, I guess engagement when it comes to Autodesk. I do use it professionally at my work. I've used it for about yeah, a couple of years now. I would say like four years now. And I got to say, I really, really do like it. So I know what this company does. But let's actually get started with this analysis. So let's actually see what the company is. I know what it is. But for all of those of you who don't know, here is a quick summary. Autodesk Inc. provides 3D design, engineering, and entertainment technology solutions worldwide. The company offers AutoCAD Civil 3D, a surveying, design, analysis, and documentation solutions for civil engineering, including land development, transportation, and environmental projects. Building connected uh, SAAS pre-construction solution, AutoCAD, which is the one that I know how to use, a software for professional design, drafting, detailing, and visualization. AutoCAD Lite, essentially the same thing as AutoCAD, just, I guess, uh, uh, you know, less uh, less more involved, I, I guess you could say. A computer-aided manufacturing CAM, software for computer numeric control machining, inspection, modeling, and manufacturing. Fusion 360, a 3D CAD, CAM, and computer-aided engineering tool. 
And there's one more here that they do have, which is my favorite out of all of them. And I'm not really seeing it. And it's actually right here. It provides inventor tools for 3D mechanical design, simulation analysis, tooling, visualization, and documentation. Vault, a data management software to manage data in one central location. That's mainly the one that I use the most guys, Inventor, with as, with as well as Vault. I've actually, as I said, I've used it for a while now in my engineering career. So yeah, I actually really like it. It's, I didn't realize that they had a stock. So thank you again so much, Lewis, for this. And uh, let's see if uh, this is actually a pretty good company to buy at this moment. Now, let's actually come over here into the earnings report. They did have earnings on the 23rd of February. EPS normalized actual came in at $1.86, beat by 5 cents. EPS gap actual $1.35, beat by 33 cents. Revenue, $1.32 billion, which is beat by $4.5 million. Coming into now the calculator, we got the ticker symbol for ADSK, market cap of 43. Well, $43.05 billion, a PE of 53.09, so that's pretty massive, with a current share price of $200. Now, if we come over here to the graph, we can see that on the five-year, they're down 5.63%. Year-to-date, they're probably up. Yeah, they're up 8.25%. 52-week range is $163.20 to $235.01. So we are essentially at the... 52 middle like we're, we're smack right in the middle between these two numbers coming back into the calculator we can see that they do not pay out a dividend which means all of this free cash is going to straighten to themselves and we also see that the five-year average it is 1.3 billion and the last year's free cash flow it is 2 billion that's actually looking like a really really good solid free cash flow you always want the last year's to be higher than that of the average so coming now into the actual fundamentals, starting with an income five years ago of negative $80.8 million. That's kind of concerning. Two one year ago of $823 million, increase of 1,119%. Now, the thing here is, is that you can see that this is a really, really nice steady increase from five to one year ago, massive outlier three years ago. Now, obviously, guys, this company has to do with software, mainly engineering software. A bunch of engineers, myself included, when COVID happened, I was at home for like a year and a half. I kid you not. I was home for like a year and a half. Uh, just, I was able to because, well, my job mainly involved dealing with inventor, dealing with, you know, making drawings. You don't really need to go into an office or to go into a factory to do inventor drawings. You can just do it from home as long as you have the company laptop. So not surprised that three years ago when COVID hit, boom, you had a massive spike in this. And then afterwards, yeah, it just came down a little bit, right? But even still though, you could see that it's still, you know, consistently increasing. Even though we do have a negative here, we are pretty consistently increasing, uh, ignoring this three-year goal value. So I'm going to give this a 60%. Looking at the free cash flow now, we could see something similar, no negatives, however. But when it comes to the consistent increases, it really wasn't that much. Now, five years ago, it was $310.1 million. To one year ago of $2.03 billion, increase of 555% with an average of $1.3 billion. Now we can see that from four to essentially two years ago, there wasn't much change. It was increasing, don't get me wrong, but there really wasn't that much change. And three years ago, it came down slightly, probably because they had a lot more capital expenditures, if I had to guess. So, you know, it's, it's okay, I guess you could say. It's still not consistently increasing, but increasing nonetheless. I'm gonna give this a 55%. Looking at the revenue, this one caught me by surprise. This is insane. Guys, take a look at this graph. It's almost perfectly linear. Like, it's crazy. Every single time it hits perfectly at the exact same spot, every single uh, one of these bars, which is amazing. Five years ago of $2.6 billion to one year ago of $5 billion, increase of 94.76%. Guys, I'm giving this a 100%. Looking at the total assets minus total liabilities, we can see that five and four years ago, they were in the negatives, but increasing it. We can see a massive spike from four to three years ago. And ever since they've kept it roughly the same with a small dip from three to two years ago. Average total assets, it is $8.2 billion. Average liabilities is $7.4 billion. And doing this difference, we get $793.1 million. I gave this 100%. I think I just forgot to change it. I'm going to actually put this, guys, as, oh, uh, yeah, well, I want to say like a 40%, mainly because a massive, massive jump, guys, right here, right here, and then a small dip, and then, you know, so that's essentially why I'm giving this a 40%. Looking at the cash flow minus the liabilities, this one caught me by surprise because, well, it's actually getting 
with worse and worse. Now you had instances where they brought it up a little bit and that instance was mainly right here two years ago to one year ago bringing it from 6.28 billion to 6.26 billion in the negatives but you can see overall it's just get heading down and even one year ago it's lower than the average of negative 5.42 billion dollars i'm actually you know what? I'm looking at this again. I don't want to give it a 45. I'm going to change this to now 35. It's just, it's really not that good in my personal opinion. Now, looking at the shares of standing, this one is absolutely incredible because, well, let's just take a look at these numbers. We got five years ago of 219.4 million shares to today of 215 million shares. That is a decrease of 2.01%. And from the previous year to the current year, almost a decrease of 1.5%. But take a look at this. You can see that from five to four years ago, kept it flat, increased it slightly from four to three years ago, probably COVID related. Okay, perfectly understandable. But then they bought it back two years ago. From three to two years ago, they went from 219.6 to 218.2. And then from 218.2 two years ago to one year ago of 215, that's another massive decrease. So I'm actually going to give this a 95%. And lastly, when it comes to the cash and coins, they currently hold $2 billion with an average of $1.6 billion. Looking at the overall grades, we gave them an income of 60%, free cash flow 55%, revenue 100%, asset mass liabilities 40%, cash flow mass liabilities 35%, and shares of standing of 95%, overall grade of 68. Not only did we miss the funny number by one, but we missed the passing grade by two. So, I, you know, if, if you were to give this a little bit higher in other metrics maybe like the assets minus liabilities yeah you could definitely get this to 70 percent but for me 68 percent it's right at the cusp definitely to do more research on because this might be a pretty good price or just a pretty good company to buy overall now let's figure out if at the current share price this is looking like a buy so now let's see guys what prices we get using this kind of free cash flow again please remember that, that the current share price it is 200 bucks so let's make some revenue growth assumptions and predict the share buybacks now let's come over here into seek Alpha, we can see that the forwards estimated at 11%. So let's say along the lines of like, I don't know, let's just say like 8%, let's say around 10%, and let's say at around 12%. And now for the projected share buyback, we can see that they have bought back at around like 2%. So let's say 1%, 2%, and 3% for the lowest, median, and high assumption. With this, guys, we get the target share prices of $217.93 to $254. And adjusting for debt, this goes up a little bit more to $224 to $261. Adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, 50%, this is $191 to $244. Ah, essentially $248. So with the current share price, guys, you can see that well, we are pretty much at the buying point, all except for the lowest assumption, the 15% margin of safety. Aside from that, this is looking like an all-out buy. Now, just like I said with HSII, please remember that this is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So please have these calculators and make that decision for yourselves. I'm not going to repeat what I just said, but the best way that you guys can help again is just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help. So now let's actually take a look at the options for when it comes to Autodesk. So we got over here a lot of liquidity, at least when it comes to expiration. Now looking at the March 24th one expiring this Friday, we can see a lot of liquidity here, guys. Oh my God. In fact, for the 200 strike, you will get a premium of $380 if you were to sell this put. That's a little bit risky seeing that currently, well, I think aftermarket, we're just at the 200. So yeah, like you're very, very close to it. You will be, you know, if this thing expires in the money, you would, you would have to buy $20,000 worth of this company for hundred shares. But other strikes are kind of looking rather decent. I mean, for 190, you would get $110. Now looking for the call side, if you do have hundred shares, well, for $202.50, you got a premium of 310. So it's actually not too bad. And even for, well, even for like $207.50, you would still get a premium of a dollar of $145. So overall, not too shabby. And when it comes to the March 31st, we see something very, very similar. Actually, it's actually a lot more. Uh, yeah, like, well, for the 200 strike, you will get $530. That's insane for the puts. Uh, for 197, strike you will get 420 nice and when it comes to the calls you will get 470 for the 202 and 360 for the 205 so a lot of good premiums here but 
you know, two hundred dollars. If this thing does execute, you either have to roll it, or you're paying twenty thousand dollars, or you get your shares taken away. But if you bought it at uh, fifty-two week lows at like one sixty-five, and you know, you sell this call for you know two hundred and ten, you know, you get one hundred and eighty dollars plus that capital gain as well. So that's really, really solid. All in all, thank you so much, Lewis, for your recommendation. I really do like Autodesk. In fact, I use it. So really, really close when it comes to the grade. And based off of the current share prices, it's looking like not a bad buy, in my personal opinion. No dividend, though, but, you know, a stock is more than just a dividend. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Hopefully, everybody liked the two companies that we covered today here. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow us on the YouTube site. Link in the description below. So with this, peace out. We'll see you all in the next stock analysis of video.